Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Let's start our video with a story in which our OP was involved in the grand work of restoring a customer's landscape. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. You want new turf? You can have it. This isn't my story, this is my dad's and happened about 10 years ago in Sydney, Australia. My dad was doing work for the local water utilities company, Sydney Water, and his job involved repairing sewer pipes throughout the city. His stint repairing pipes lasted about two years before he moved on. Anyway, one particular job was the repair of a pipe in someone's backyard. The backyard, as said by my dad, was about 50% grass and the rest was just dirt. A dust bowl, in his own words. Some ground was dug up, 2 by 3 meters, roughly, which is 6 by 9 feet, and the pipe was repaired. Everyone's happy except, yep, you guessed it, the owner of the house with the crap backyard. The assigned inspector for the job received a complaint a day after the repair took place, and the complaint was passed on to my dad. Apparently, the area which was dug up wasn't sufficiently restored to the original state before the repair took place. My dad was asked to return and restore the ground, and this is where the fun starts. He rocks up at this bloke's place, cuts the 2 by 3 meter rectangle out, digs out 200 millimeters, 8 inches of soil, and replaces that turf with the best possible and most expensive soil he can find, and tops that with notoriously fast-growing and luscious green kikuyu grass. On top of this, the grass was fertilized very generously, and every day for the next week, this patch of grass was watered. Within two weeks, this immaculate looking, perfectly cut rectangle patch of grass sitting in the middle of this dust bowl backyard stood out like a turd in a punch bowl. This thing looked so effing stupid. The owner never called back and for good reason. He got his bloody restoration. Joke's on you. The owner probably lays in that patch of grass every night staring at the stars. And our second story. Revenge on a con artist. Two years ago, I met a man in a bar. He approached me and we started chatting. He was very charming, intelligent, and charismatic. We exchanged numbers and began dating. He was very attentive and sweet, single, never been married, no children. It's beginning to sound like Prince Charming. I'm also a little naive and haven't had a lot of experience with relationships. We see each other regularly and he's in constant contact with me via phone. He texts me all day, every day. We exchange hundreds of messages every day when we weren't together. Six weeks after we meet, he begins telling me how much he dislikes his current living arrangement and how awful his housemates are and how he wants to move out. I live in a large home by myself and he hints if he can move in. I think this is a little fast, so I don't offer him a place to stay with me. He never mentions moving again. We continue to see each other and talk all day, every day. We talk about the future, marriage, holidays, kids, etc. He'd told me previously about how wealthy he is, how he owns multiple homes and businesses around the world, which is why it was surprising eight months into the relationship when he started asking me for money when he started his new business. I declined to give him any money as I've noticed a lot of little lies and inconsistencies with his stories and behavior. He's also very controlling and constantly nagging me. I start to cool off on him as things aren't adding up. He assures me everything he said is true and he'd never lie to me and he loves me so much and would never hurt me. Something feels off still. I start sleuthing him online trying to find information about him. Nothing comes up. I end things with him. He begs me back. I'm dubious, but continue to talk to him as I'm very curious about finding out who this guy I fell in love with really is. I hired a private investigator to find out as I just can't shake my gut instinct that something bad is going on. I was devastated to find out the truth. He's been married for 10 years and lives with his wife and two kids. He's been married three times and has five kids. He's broke. He lied about his age, where he grew up, childhood, etc. He has a serious mental health disorder. He's a pathological liar and chronic manipulator. I did realize this by the end. He sleeps with men on the down low and has a harem of women. He perpetuates love fraud schemes for attention, money, and acquisitions. He's conned his friends out of money. The list is endless. 
I confront him. He lies and says it's not true. I'm livid. I tell him to get lost. He goes for one last try to con money out of me again. Revenge. I blast him on social media from an anonymous account to warn his future victims. I post screenshots of the dossier provided by the PI. It creates a huge amount of interest and goes viral. It turns out this guy screwed over more people than originally thought, and people want justice. I've left the state I was living in, and I'm trying to move on with my life. Always trust your gut instincts. And our next story. You mess with my truck, I mess with your phone. This story happened about 12 years ago. I was working for a company that owned intellectual property rights to some automotive aftermarket tech, headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona. In 2002, the owner of the company suggested to his employees the possibility of relocating the whole business to San Diego. The company was very small, only about five people in the whole organization, and all the co-workers knew each other and were more or less friends, either with each other or with the CEO. The boss insisted that we all had a vote, and if anyone voted against the move, the company would stay. We all voted unanimously to move to San Diego, and our first couple years we ended up all living in the same apartment complex in Mission Valley. The new office location was intentionally headquartered across the street from the apartment community, which, as you might imagine, was very convenient. In those days, I drove a new pickup truck, and since my office was across the street, I didn't drive my vehicle much except on weekends or special trips. As a result, the vehicle remained parked for long periods of time in the covered parking area of the garage. One day, I went out to my vehicle to find a hefty trash bag dumped in the back of my truck. Naturally, I found it a bit creepy and off-putting. When I hopped into the bed to haul it out, I found, to my utter disgust, that it was dripping wet with juices from rancid meat of some kind. I think probably chicken. At this point, I angrily decided that I was going to figure out who did this, even if I had to manually sort through every item of trash in this stinking kitchen bag. I donned some latex gloves and went to work, fishing item by item, piecemeal from the rotting trash bag. Eventually, I struck pay dirt. I found a utility bill envelope that had been crumpled up. I opened it up and discovered that the culprit was one of my co-workers who fancied himself a bit of a prankster. Said offender, I'll call him Cam, lived in the same apartment phase as I did a few doors down. First, a little context. Back in those days, I was fascinated with lockpicking. I owned, among other things, a lockpick gun, which admittedly requires very little skill to operate, aside from that it's convenient because they're quicker than using a rake or individual picks. I also owned some basic phone testing equipment, including a gray bar telco lineman test set, with some effort, I succeeded to locate the telco phone utility closet on my floor and was able to let myself in. I don't remember if I had to use the ANI line to identify cam circuit or whether the termination points were labeled, but I did manage to locate the ring and tip for his pair. Then, using the lineman set, I was able to use star 70 to activate the call forwarding feature. This was SBC AT&T in those days. I forwarded all of his calls to the local Jack in the Box restaurant. More context. My coworkers all teased me incessantly because I refused to eat at Jack in the Box because, well, I simply didn't like the food. This would make it subtly obvious at some point that I was the person responsible since JITB was a running office joke by this time. After forwarding his line, I cross-connected the ring and tip, which shorted the line out, status, line was dead, and calls were forwarded to JITB. I let Cam believe that I'd hacked his phone service provider's switch, yes, he was gullible, and let him beg for two days before undoing the damage. Meanwhile, everyone in the office thought it was the funniest revenge they'd ever heard of and agreed the response was appropriate. And our last story. Entitled customer wants to show the freezer he incorrectly installed gets sued by the owner. I worked at a burger joint back then, I was working through college at the time. This restaurant was brand new and the building was only finished being built six months ago. From day one, there were electrical problems with the walk-in freezer. This one is the size of most living rooms. Once we even had to throw out all the meat and clothes for a week for repairs and to replace the stock. Kinda bad for a burger joint to only serve salad, you know? Most of the time, I was the barkeep, but sometimes the waiters needed help. This was a day I was helping them as the bar was slow. 
I see a customer in his 40s, whom I'll call Ken from here on out, and his son who was maybe 10 years old. I take the orders and at first everything's normal. I go to get their drinks and put the order in. I come back and he asked me if he could go in the back with his son because he wanted to show off the custom freezer he'd installed with his company. He even bragged about needing a crane to lift it into the place. I told Ken no, it was not only a health code violation but also a huge safety issue. He got absolutely angry. He argued that he knew the kitchen better than anyone there. He himself wired the freezer and his company installed it. The son was looking embarrassed. He even asked his dad to stop and he didn't need to see it. Ken berated the kid asking if he was proud of his dad and the restaurant equipment slash electric company he owned. I told him I'd go ask the manager just to make him happy. I wasn't going to ask. I knew the answer. I went to the back for about two minutes and ran a load of dishes for the dish guy while I waited on Ken and son's food. The food came out and I took it to them. I told Ken the manager said no. Most people would be okay with that. He demanded to speak to the manager himself. Little did Ken know that I'd overheard my manager, who also was the owner, saying he was going to sue the company that installed the freezer, but he was having trouble finding out who the owner was so that he could have his lawyer address the letter to him. My boss had lost thousands of dollars because of the freezer being incorrectly installed. It passed building and initial health inspections because the wiring issue wasn't visible and it held temperature on the inspection day. Oh, was boss happy when I told him the owner of the freezer installation company was right outside eating a burger. He and I walked out and I introduced Ken as the owner of the company that installed the freezer. Manager put on a big customer service smile, the kind that secretly says, screw you. He says he's so happy with the new restaurant, but he needed the owner's card in case there was an issue with the brand new freezer. Ken happily gives manager his personal card with his personal cell and email. Boss smiles with a real one this time and says thank you. Now my lawyer will be in contact with you soon for the incorrectly installed freezer. Ken just has his mouth hanging open. Before he can say anything, manager tells him he had two new electricians look at it because no one in his office would help him. So he knows it was the freezer, and he knows it was his shoddy job that cost him thousands in monetary loss. He also adds that if he attempts to leave without paying, he'll be arrested because now the manager has his name and phone number. Manager slash owner did sue and won close to $50,000 in damages. Well, that backfired spectacularly. Very expensive burger, and his son was probably not impressed. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.